dan 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 So we've made it back into the house and it was a successful elderberry mission. I mean we've got quite a lot. We should have more than enough to make some elderberry wine. Fantastic. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is prep everything. So, we've got all these stalks and things, and they're a bit of a pain to try and get the berries off. So, I've got myself some freezer bags. There we go. And I also got myself my tool, which is a fork. And you just literally go through, and it strips off all the berries and leaves the... Uh, these are all the stalks, which is fantastic, so we can get an accurate measurement of how many elderberries we have. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to strip every one of these elderberries, and uh, yeah, we'll be right back. So I have finished stripping with my fork and my freezer bag, and here are the processed elderberries. Uh, it's quite a good haul actually, considering it took only 10 minutes really to pick these uh, from the tree. You know, it was just relaxed and easy. So, what I'm going to have to do, this is 500 grams of elderberries. I've weighed it. And what we need for this recipe is one kilo of elderberries. So what I'm going to go and do, is I'm going to put these in the freezer. One, because they'll last longer. Two, it extracts more juice. And three, it gives me more time to go and get the other half a kilo of elderberries. So, um, I'll be back. So, uh, yeah, I'm out on my wonder, and I found apples which is just as good as elderberries. In fact, some would say better because you can eat these. Um, I think it's probably a hybrid between a cooking apple or eating apple and a crab apple, but it will still be good for homebrew and it's wild and that's what we like. So yeah, I ended up taking a drive. I'm now down at the beach uh, in a place called Port Quinn. So I'm gonna sit and chill here for a few minutes and then I'm gonna head, uh, yeah, drive back home slowly and look for more elderberries. Yay. Anyway, see you in a bit, enjoy the view. So today has been a great haul. Uh, I took a little drive on my little ped. It's great fun actually. Um, yeah, so I took a little drive on my ped, just around the local area. I went to f as far as Chewithin, which is, has a strawberry farm. Funny enough, I didn't get any strawberries from there. I went looking for elderberries. Uh, I ended up heading down the back roads because the uh, all of the tractors have come in and cleared all the hedgerows for the winter so I had to go down the back rows where they hadn't been cleared and climb up hedges but yeah I got my 500 grams of elderberries I had a bit of a wander around Port Quinn very nice very pretty uh, as you see and I also got myself some apples check that local wild apples uh, I know I could just go to the supermarket and pick them up for you know a couple of quid for a bag but wild from Cornwall in Port Quinn so I can make some local wine, I suppose, or cider or something out of it, I don't know yet. Well, I didn't go out to get it, but I took it because it's there and I can freeze them. So yeah, I got my elderberries and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same freezer bag and a fork. We have the kilo of elderberries, I have half a kilo of apricots, and now it's time to start the process of making the wine. So the first part is gonna take five days, and that is because for five days, the brew is going to be in this bucket, uh, slowly steeping away, releasing the flavours from the elderberries and the apricots. Just slowly get out their sugars, um, basically in the bucket. And then we're going to strain off all of the rubbish, put it into a demijohn, add the sugar and actually ferment it. So um, yeah, it's a very simple and relaxed thing. First you take a sterile bucket, I've already sterilised this, with a lid. Get your apricots and just cut them up. I've now roughly diced all of these apricots into relatively small bits. Some are bigger than others, so I can eat that one. Mm. 498 <laughs> grams going in. Anyway, so in they go. Into my lovely sterile bucket. Mm. And also, all of the frozen elderberries. Okay, pretty much all of the frozen elderberries. Oh 
Oh yeah. So there you can see lovely elderberries and apricots. So I've got a litre of boiled water because, you know, less contamination the better. It's been boiled so it is sterile so hopefully this will flash kill any of the wild yeast on the elderberries. So I'm going to do another litre, leave it as two litres and then yeah, stir it. So it's the next day, and so day one of stirring. Mmm, colour's coming out. So yeah, four more days to go. Right, so this process is really quite simple. You just got to stop the bugs from getting in. God damn alcohol flies. So basically, you just take a little bit out, just in a glass, like so. Get your Camden tablet because we want to make sure they don't get in. Take a Camden tablet and two spoons. Teaspoons work pretty well. And then crush the tablet. And do a good job of making sure you've got it into a fine, as fine a powder as you can. Oh god, can't even speak. You can really smell it when you crush it. I don't like using them as a general rule, but with wild fruits, a Camden tablet is pretty good. So, as you can see, it's pretty much powder. In it goes. There we go. Dissolve the powder in it. As you can tell, it's changed its color for me, the original one. Uh, here we go. Here goes the Camden tablet. And I'm just going to stir it while I'm adding it. So yeah, that's day three. And now that should prepare us wonderfully for day five. So I can just put that on. So yeah, be back tomorrow. So it is another day. Oh yeah. So no, um, this is day four. And yeah. Smells pretty good actually. Uh, there's no yeast activity in here, which is fantastic. So yeah. Tomorrow is the day. Awesome. So it is day number five. That's ten. <laughs> it's the morning for me, anyway. So it is day number five, and we have got our elderberry and apricot mix. So I'm going to crack she open. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, you can't see anything, probably, so I'm probably going to have to cut that. I smell. It smells kind of uh, mildly sulfury, which is fine. For some reason, when you do a mix of elderberries and uh, the dried apricots, I think it's the sulfur dioxide in the apricots, maybe, uh, that come off. Uh, it's used as a preserving agent. Could just be something funky um, with that combination. All I know is every time I've made this, it's always had a really kind of sulfury smell when you first open the bucket. It does diminish, so I'm gonna presume it's something like elderberries. So, because I'm doing it for a video, and plus it's just my way to do things OCD with the sterilizing. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pouring my lovely mush into a pan through my little sieve there. At this point, this doesn't have to be sterile, just so you know. It just has to be clean, because we're going to be heating it up to sterilize it. So in goes all this mushy stuff. So after five days, it's got quite a nice color. So this is going to take a little while to sift through, as you can tell, full of pulp. So uh, I'll be back once this is sift through. So filtering took around 30-ish minutes. Um, that's because I was using the little sieve. Normally I'd use a pair of tights, but I don't have any, so I used the sieve instead. So just, you know, bear that in mind. Um, you know, I could have used a pillowcase, but I didn't. So anyway, 
So I've filtered out all of the particulates, the big ones anyway, and this is what's left. This is about one litre of pulp with a bit of liquid. So yeah, it's good to do it now. Um, well, this isn't alcohol, because once it's all alcohol and you're trying to filter it out, you're going to lose some. And as you've seen in, uh, funny enough, my fruit wine diary. Da -da 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 -da. My whole roof is covered in scum. Uh, yeah, the results of that. So I am going to sterilize this with heat as well. It's going to drive off all the preservatives uh, that could be left in here from the... Camden tablet we added in. Here we go, see I remembered. So basically I'm just going to heat this up till it comes to just about a boil. Just enough to kill off anything and drive off any additives. So uh, yeah, great fun. So it's just coming up, as you can hear hopefully, very slightly in the background, uh, it's just coming up to temperature. So it's coming up to the golden temperature, which is sterilization via heat. So. Because it's very slightly fermented, it's got a very, very slight wine flavor to it. It's actually very pleasant. That is very, very pleasant. So, um, oh, well, it should have good things in store. Maybe one year I'll do it with a wild yeast and just let this go, but this is actually really nice wine. So uh, I don't want to take any risks, hence the extra step. Now I'm going to add in my sugar. Well, this is nice and hot. I got my measuring can, which I used my scales so I could roughly measure out 300 grams. And yeah, I just use a can as a rough measuring guide because it takes forever with a scale that only, you know, goes up to about 300 grams. So this way, all I have to do is roughly follow the line and shake it. It's roughly 300 grams, in it goes. And because I work off the basis of a kilo, if I do slightly over, like 100 grams over, it's not going to make any difference. Whereas if I'm maxing out everything to start off with, more precise measurements are needed. Right, that's three, that's six. Nope, a little bit more. And about a third of that. Approximately. Now let's stir in this cheeky sugar and let it cool down. So I've gone ahead and sterilized my demijohn. Now I use the same bleach and washing up liquid like I have in my other videos. Uh, I do have a video, yeah, no, see, I lost my train of thought. Um, I do have a video just on sterilizing. Uh, I will need to do a remake, but I'm gonna do it when I get a different camera. So um, yeah, basically this is now chilling. I've got it on a ice pack kind of like a cheap version of a quick chill without heating up my fridge or freezer so it will reduce temperature very quickly so I'm gonna add the extras into the demijohn so I've got my yeast nutrient so I only need a cheeky teaspoon of that I've got my funnel which I have funny enough sterilized and dried in advance so this actually goes in which is always good. I'm going to be adding in pectolase. Now the yeast nutrient is advised. The pectolase doesn't really matter, it's just for the finished product. And again, we put in approximately one teaspoon. The great thing about an enzyme is it's not destroyed. It's just used as a catalyst to break down larger molecules. Um, if you want, you can add in a little bit of amylase. I'm not going to, just in case there is a little bit of starch in there. And the yeast I'm going to be using is an all-purpose red yeast. Um, it's going to bring out more of the berry flavours and it's going to complement the wine very well. If not, use a universal um, experiment. That's the great thing about it. I mean, you could even use a cider yeast. That also brings out fruit flavours. So I'm going to make a little bit of a starter because this yeast is kind of old. So I'm just going to take a little glug of this, so you can see looking nice and cloudy, uh, it hasn't separated yet. I'm going to add some cold water to it, and that's going to become my starter. Hazy. So normally I don't do a starter, I just chuck it straight in. Always works. 
less fuss, but older yeast, give it a bit of, there we go, time to activate and I use a bit more. So yeah, be back shortly. Right, so this is now cooled down enough for us to add it into the demi jump. Thank God for the ice pack. Just a cheap Poundland one. Works very well, it turns out. So down that goes, just so it's out of the way. So I've got a litre of cold water here. So I'm just gonna add in cheeky, cheeky little bit into here. Save too much swirling. There you go, pretty much all dissolved already. So here is our liquid. Let's give this a little taste. Ooh, that's nice. The sugar, apparently you can't really taste the tannin. I can know it's there, but should be nice. I mean, this should be ready to drink in a year, so, or six months, because it's only a cheeky kilo of elderberries. We're gonna have to find out and try. So there is it, pretty looking pretty good. I'm gonna top it up with a bit of cold water. And hopefully this should fit in pretty much to the top. Swirly, swirly, swirly. There would be life. And there we go. Not too shabby. So give us a little swirl. Yeah, and hopefully there's not too much sediment in there. So just for my ease, it goes a bit more water. Makes it easy to get the hydrometer out. So just gotta go and wash off, finish cleaning off my hydrometer and my airlock, which have both been sterilized in, sterilized in this bleach solution, which is very handy because once you're finished, you can clean the worktop of all the elderberry juice. Takes it off fantastically. So yeah, just gonna rinse these. Here we are back. I've got my airlock already pre-fitted with cold water and the bung and the side has been sterilized before I started. So let's see what the potential alcohol of this is hopefully going to be. Well, the potential alcohol in here is 1.080, which is 13%. So that could be to do with the slight sugar variation from using a can, which was just approximately. Uh, it could have been roughly accurate and there could have been some sugars in here released from the apricots uh, and the elderberries to give it that slight extra boom, uh, boost. Either way, it is the potential alcohol of 13% and everything is done. So now we just got to put this to one side and uh, leave it to do its thing. Hopefully it won't explode everywhere because we filtered uh, out the vast majority of the particles. If it does, oh well, you know, stuff happens, just put a tray under it. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Um, obviously, rate, comment, subscribe, like, share. I mean, you know, all those cool things. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.